there are proofs that uh, he have a, a amazing power in the, the defying intuition. If you want to be at the cusp of the future, you have to be willing to fail. That's easy to say, but failure hurts. But that's what you're supposed to be doing, you know? It's, it's a grand intellectual adventure if you know what you're doing. Find a new job. We are looking for frustration. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. If it's not frustrating, yeah. it cannot be anything important. Yeah. <laughs> we want to apply magnetic field to create vortices, but in the end, we want to we want the magnetic field to fluctuate strongly. Then. You're asking <laughs> for a lot. <laughs> you you, you want to assume <laughs> materials are perfectly designed yes. the way you want it. I don't think that theories are running off, and they're 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 so far ahead that it's not important in terms of what they're doing. I think. That, uh, that's, that's actually the wrong way to view it. Even though one of our goals is looking for uh, this phase, it's still not obvious to us, um, beyond a fundamental physics interest, what their interest they could, they could bring about. So that's something we rely on theorists to, to sort of inform us about. How do you prove topological superconductivity without you know, seeing a Majorana? So with the uh, oxide interfaces, yeah. There were reports of superconductivity on them. Are they all false? We never thought quantum information would contribute so much to condensed matter physics. This is really about the types of emergent behavior that can occur when you have a system with lots of qubits and strong interactions where everybody couples to lots of other guys. And we don't have the theoretical tools yet to understand the possibilities there. Experiment can lead the way. So there's, there's your future, man. Right. Yeah. Talking to experimentalists just forces me to really sharpen my understanding of... Yeah, of, so we are yeah. at the opposite ends of the <laughs> spectrum in some form. Yeah. Converging together right now, yeah. And here we are. You know, this is not just Big Bang Theory. We're even more exciting than the characters in Big Bang Theory. We're creating an entangled community of scientists with different backgrounds, different types of knowledge, but all of whom have enough intellectual common ground to engage with one another in a fruitful way. It's great for young people, you know, the students, the postdocs. There is an emergence, right? An emergent intelligence that comes only when you put all these people together. The beauty is that there's this vision that the theorists have sort of carved out or starting to carve out and I'm close enough to the action that as an experimentalist I can go in and, and start to pursue that you know, while they're still carving it out. I think that gives me a huge head start on everyone else and a great advantage. We want to go to, to every household and say there's something amazing happening in your evolution in physics and it's happening right here at Caltech. We collaborated with Google for example and Minecraft to do a mod we call QCraft and we talk about entanglement and superposition and teleportation. And the kids are eating it up, they're loving it. And imagine that, you know, for thousands of years, we've been trying to push science and technology forward, but we didn't know anything about decimal arithmetic. We were stuck using Roman numerals. You know, we, it's holding us back. Quantum computing is like that. Thousands of years of human civilization, we were missing the special sauce that is going to take information to a new level. And now we can glimpse what it is, but we really don't know what it's going to be good for, but it's going to be something big.